Hi, I'm Dr. Herbert Long from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and I'm here at ESMO 2025. We've highlighted five outstanding abstracts on oncogene-addicted lung cancers, which were presented at ESMO 2025, and I'm happy to share those with you all. To begin with, in the HER2 mutation space, there were two prominent clinical trials that were presented back-to-back -back at ESMO 2025. This first one is the SOHO-1 study, which was presented by Dr. Sally Lee on a drug called Severbertinib, which is a TKI with both HER2 as well as EGFR activity. In this particular trial, three cohorts were actually presented at this particular conference, representing over 200 patients. This includes cohort D, which were patients who had prior systemic therapy, but naive to HER2 exon 20 targeted therapies, where the overall response was 64%, with duration of response of 9.2 months. Cohort E included patients who've had prior targeted antibody drug conjugates, response rate of 38%, and over eight months in terms of duration of response. There was also cohort F, where patients actually had a response rate of 71% and a duration of response of 11 months. Actually, overall, in actual fact, these were very encouraging studies. Diarrhea was the most common adverse event, mainly of grade one and two only. Additionally, the second trial is the BMian Lung 01 study, which is a phase one trial of a drug known as Zongirtinib, also in patients with HER2 mutation positive non-small cell lung cancer. Zongirtinib is an irreversible tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which selectively inhibits HER2 while sparing wild-type EGFR, which therefore leading to limited toxicities. Specifically, Dr. Sanjay Popart presented cohort two. In this particular cohort, the response rate was 77% based on blind independent central review and a very impressive disease control rate of 96%. The most common treatment-related adverse events included diarrhea as well as transaminitis, predominantly of grade one and two, and there were very low levels of grade three toxicities. Now in the KRAS G12C space, Dr. Cassier, on behalf of his co-authors, presented the intracranial activity of a drug known as Olomoracib, which is a second generation KRAS G12C inhibitor in patients with active untreated brain metastasis. 19 patients, which included 15 who've had prior systemic treatments when analyzed, and 18 of these were evaluable for efficacy. The intracranial objective response rate was 44.4%, with a disease control rate of 83.3%. There was actually a rapid rate of intracranial response. At the time of reporting, the median duration of response and progression-free survival was not reached. Next, there were also abstracts on the EGFR space. And to begin with, in terms of EGFR typical mutations, we have an antibody drug conjugate known as sasituzumab uh, trirumatecan, which is actually also known as SAC-TMT, which is an ADC with a novel linker and a topolomerase 1 inhibitor as its payload. Professor Zhang reported uh, its trial in the phase three Optitrop Lung 04 study, which is a multi-center phase three study randomizing patients to SAC-TMT against platinum-based chemotherapy doublet uh, in patients who have progressed on EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. 376 patients were randomized on a one-to-one -one fashion where the progression-free survival was 8.3 months versus 4.3 months. The median overall survival was not reached in the SAC-TMT group versus 17.4 months in the control group. And interestingly enough, there were no drug-related interstitial lung disease in patients who were treated. Now lastly, there was also interesting abstracts in the EGFR atypical mutation space. I would like to highlight the trial that was presented by Dr. Liu, which is the FERMO-003 study, which was a phase two study of fermonortinib in patients with EGFR exon 20 insertions. In this trial, patients were treated in an open-label study of uh, 240 milligrams once a day with fermonitinib, and eligible patients had to have advanced uh, non-small cell lung cancer with EGFR exon 20 insertions and have had prior platinum-based chemotherapy. In total, 71 patients were enrolled, of which 22.5% of these patients had CNS metastasis. The objective response rate was 44.3%, and the disease control rate was 90%, for median duration of response of 8.3 months. Overall, in actual fact, the treatment-related uh, adverse events was actually quite manageable with diarrhea, as well as elevated blood creatinine in some patients. And incidentally, a phase three study in treatment naive patients is currently ongoing. In summary, I think we've seen a lot of very interesting abstracts that's being presented at ESMO 2025. And there are other very interesting presentations and posters, which I have not had time to cover, so do take the time to go through some of the archived material and hopefully you'll be able to get a good update in how we're treating oncogene addicted lung cancer in 2025. Thank you.